Oh boy, I am excited today. We finally have us an affordable HomeKit Secure Video Doorbell. So today we're gonna to talk all about it. I got a lot of questions from you guys. I'm gonna try my best to answer all those questions. I installed this thing. I've been using it for a little over a week now, part of my everyday life. So can't wait to just share with you what I found, how it's been working for me, and answer all of your questions. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using HomeKit with new videos released every Sunday right here. So today we are talking about the brand new Circle View doorbell. In my opinion, the first reasonable option for a doorbell camera with native support for HomeKit secure video. Now we've got a lot to talk about. As I said, I got a lot of questions from you guys. I'm gonna to try to answer them all in this video. I have a feeling this one might get a little bit long, so I will put time codes down below in case you wanna skip around, check out any certain parts of this video. But first, we gotta show some love to our sponsor today, Trend Micro. So I have been using their premium security suite to protect my devices against malware, viruses, ransomware, and other threats. It also turns any public hotspot into a secure Wi-Fi connection with a VPN, and you get access to other awesome tools like identity theft protection, parental controls, and even 24-7 emergency assistance. You can use this for up to 10 devices, which is great for all the teleworking and virtual learning from home that many of us have been doing lately. I've included a link and a discount code for 10% off your purchase of that premium security suite down below. Okay, so when I asked you guys for questions, first of all, I got a lot of really good ones, so if you sent me a question, thank you for that. A lot of you guys wanted me to compare this doorbell camera to other doorbell cameras like Arlo, Nest, Natatmo, Eufy, you know, you get the idea. This doorbell camera, much like the original Circle View camera, works exclusively with HomeKit Secure Video, and that is the reason to buy this. So I'm not gonna be directly comparing this to any other doorbell cameras today, because, well, really there's nothing to compare it to. It is the only one that works with HomeKit Secure Video, which is why it is the first doorbell camera to go on my front porch. All right, so moving on, there are two options that you can buy. You can buy the doorbell itself for $199 from the Apple or Logitech site, or you can buy this with installation for $299 from the Logitech site. So far, I believe it is only available in the US. I've not been able to get any information regarding the availability in Canada, Europe, or other places. Now, real quick regarding the $299 option, if you purchase this through the Logitech website, they will send a professional installer from HelloTech to come and quote unquote handle all the wiring and any necessary drilling, set up your device, and help you configure and optimize it. Now from what I can tell, your existing doorbell must still meet the electrical requirements even for this option, which means you must have an existing compatible doorbell. I don't think they're gonna run wires and things like that if you don't already have a doorbell set up. Now speaking of that, regardless of which option you purchase, to use this doorbell, you must have a functioning wired doorbell system, eight to 24 volts or higher, and a compatible chime, so they say. Now many of you asked if you could install this if you don't have an existing doorbell or chime and only use it with like your home pods. Well, I do know of one person at least that has accomplished this. Shout out to my man, Scott, who's actually one of our channel members. He actually shared in our Discord group how he was able to install this without having a previous doorbell button, chime, or transformer by using a plug-in 24 volt transformer found on Amazon for 20 bucks. So you'll of course need a nearby outlet for this, but he said it works like a charm. And he also said this was confirmed by Logitech support that it should work. Now I tried to get an official statement from Logitech myself regarding this, but still haven't heard back on that. Now again, in the documentation, they do claim that you must have an existing doorbell and chime for this to work. But I did wanna share in case it's something you wanna try or look into yourself. Now moving on, it does connect via Wi-Fi, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So you'll need a solid Wi-Fi signal wherever you install this. 
You will need a HomeKit hub, being either an iPad, any HomePod, or an Apple TV. And lastly, you will need an iCloud plan through Apple in order to store your recordings. With the 200 gigabyte iCloud plan, you get 10 days of recording for one camera. And with the two terabyte plan, you get 10 days of recording for up to five cameras. Your stored recordings will not count against your allotted storage space, so don't worry about that. With HomeKit Secure Video, your footage and streams are end-to-end -end encrypted uh, to your devices, so only you and the people you share your HomeKit home with can view them. Now, the camera itself has an IP65 weatherproof rating, meaning it's water resistant, which should be fine outside as long as you don't submerge it in a swimming pool. They say it can support temperatures as low as negative four degrees Fahrenheit. And depending on the type of transformer you have up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit for the eight to 16 volt transformers and up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit for the 17 to 24 uh, volt transformers in the shade. Yep, that's actually what they say in the shade. So that there is definitely something to consider. If you live somewhere with pretty extreme weather, then there's no guarantee that this will work outside of those temperature ranges. And especially if you live somewhere that gets on the high end of those temperatures and you don't have good shade or covering, then I'd say there is a very good chance that this doorbell will overheat. It appears that direct sunlight is not a good thing for this product. Fortunately for me, I have a covered front porch that doesn't get any direct sunlight and the temperatures here rarely if ever get outside of those ranges, so I should be fine. The camera features a 160 degree field of view with a head to toe portrait view format. It has a five megapixel sensor with 1200 by 1600 HDR enabled video. It has a 4000 Kelvin LED light strip that illuminates the area up to six feet away and provides what's called color night vision, which is really awesome, I gotta say. It has a speaker and a microphone for two-way talking, and it's thin enough to fit a door frame as thin as two inches wide. Thanks to HomeKit Secure Video, you have the ability to detect and record any motion or only people, animals, or vehicles. We also have facial recognition capabilities and motion zones all of which we'll talk about more in just a minute. So out of the box, we get this little guide here, a mounting template, a couple of mounts with screws, our doorbell chime kit, and of course the doorbell camera itself with our home kit pairing coat here on the back. So Logitech actually didn't provide an installation guide in the packaging here. Instead, there are directions to go to their website uh, where they have an installation guide. And I must admit, I really do like the way they did this. The setup and instructions are very good. They're a little interactive um, and just really easy to follow. So I will put a link to that setup guide down below just in case you wanna go ahead and check it out and kind of go through those steps to see what's involved. So the instructions do tell you first to pair the camera with HomeKit before installing it outside. To do this, we'll need to plug it into power using the micro USB port on the bottom. Oddly enough, there is no micro USB cord in the box. Okay, probably not a big deal for most of us. You know, like me, you can probably find a micro USB cord laying around somewhere, but in the case where you don't already have one at home, I can only imagine how frustrating it would be to, you know, get this new product, get all excited to go set it up, and then find out you don't have everything you need to get it set up. Anyways, I digress. Assuming you do have a micro USB cord, plug it into a power source and we'll continue with the setup process. Now here is something really cool. They actually included NFC in the doorbell. So if you have an iPhone that supports NFC, simply tap your phone between the LED and the button and it will automatically open up the home app and begin the pairing process. But I suck at reading directions so I missed that. I just open the home app and tap the plus icon and then scan the HomeKit code on the back just like I've done with countless other HomeKit devices. And of course, that works just as you'd expect also. I'm happy to say that the doorbell did connect to HomeKit very easily the first time, no issues at all. Now, when you first pair this up, you'll have all the options you get with any HomeKit camera, plus a few extras since this is a doorbell camera. I'll show you all the settings that you have once we get everything installed. Next, I took it outside just to test the Wi-Fi connection and the viewing angle of the camera. Then I removed the previous doorbell and used the provided template just to make sure my holes were good in the right spots and everything lined lined up right. 
Then you'll connect the existing wires to the mount, which is real easy to do. You just kind of push them in there. I use the 20 degree mount facing towards my door. And sorry, I didn't get a great angle of this, but basically you just push those two wires in these holes and you know they are secure when you can't easily pull them back out. Screw in that mount and then you pop on your doorbell and you're all done with this part. And to remove the doorbell, you just use a little SIM ejector tool thingy or a paper clip or whatever. Um, and you push in this little hole at the bottom of the doorbell. Now I would imagine the downside to this is that if somebody is familiar with this product, it would be really easy to come and steal within just a few seconds if they wanted to. Probably not a real issue, but just something to consider, I guess. Now all that's left is the chime kit. Again, couldn't get a great angle since my chime kit was so high on the wall. With the chime kit, the best thing to do is really just follow those directions very carefully, step by step. It's actually not hard at all, and all the directions are fantastic in my opinion. And once that's all done, I was good to go. The chime kit was a little too big to place inside my box, so I just mounted it along the top using the provided 3M sticky tape. Again, I'll put a link to that setup guide below in case you wanna kinda of look through that and all those steps and see what's involved there. Now let's talk about the home app, the settings and everything we have there. Here you can change the room, you can see the included accessories. Uh, with this doorbell camera, we actually get a light sensor and a motion sensor as well that we can use in other HomeKit automations if we want. We have the notification section here. Now first you can choose which HomePods will get a chime when the doorbell is pushed. Choose if you want to allow snapshots in the notifications. Choose to get notifications if the camera status changes or if it goes offline. Get notifications on your phone anytime or only during certain times. You can also set your notifications based on who is home if you want. Then at the bottom, you can choose to turn on or off doorbell notifications and activity notifications. Activity notifications are when the camera detects motion, people, animals, or vehicles. Going back, we have the recording options. Just like any HomeKit secure video camera, we can choose whether to stream and record when we're away or at home. We can also choose what type of motion we want recorded, being people, animals, or vehicles. And you can choose to record audio or not. Going back, we also have face recognition. You can turn this on or off. It'll use people tagged in your photos library to determine who is at the door, which is really cool. And you can also give names to people detected that aren't recognized from your photos library. We'll talk more about the facial recognition and how that worked for me in a minute. We also have the ability to create motion zones. You can create multiple zones and invert those zones. You just can't overlap them. And finally, you can turn on or off the camera status light as well as the night vision light. Now I wanna discuss automations real quick. As I mentioned, you can use the included light sensor and motion sensor for your HomeKit automations. For some reason in the Apple Home app, you know, it doesn't allow you to use the light sensor. It only allows you to use the motion sensor when you're setting up automations, but you can use a third party HomeKit app like the free Eve app or the Home Plus app. So with those, you can actually set up automations utilizing that light sensor also. And something else really cool to point out is that you can actually use the doorbell press in automations. For example, when somebody pushes the doorbell, turn the front foyer light on. The doorbell doesn't show up like other HomeKit buttons do in the Apple Home app, but you can use one of these other third-party apps like the Eve app to create automations using that doorbell as a trigger. So you can see here, I'm just creating a simple automation that when somebody pushes that doorbell once, this light strip will turn on, which is just a light strip that I have in my window for Christmas. Pretty cool. I love that we have the ability to use that doorbell in our automations. So once I got it installed, I wanted to test it out a little bit as a part of my everyday life for a while so I could share with you my thoughts and my experiences using it. Now keep in mind, this is the first video doorbell that I've used here on my front porch and I like it. I like it a lot. It's not perfect, but it's been pretty great for me, someone who's all in on HomeKit. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that portrait orientation. I know some people are not gonna like this. There's no way to change it to be landscape. It is what it is. For me, the view on my front porch with this is perfect. I can see the entire area there that someone might be standing from head to toe. Most likely I can see any packages or deliveries that are left. And I can even see when people are coming up or down those stairs there. 
Now I found that I can have up to two live streams open in the home app at the same time, which is good. That means, you know, if the wife and I are away and we each get a notification on our phone, we can both view the camera at the same time. I did try viewing a third stream and it wouldn't work. So it does look like, you know, those two streams is the limit there. Personally, I think the camera is great. That HDR or high dynamic range gives you a very evenly lit image, especially somewhere like this under a covering. You might typically see the sky and those sunny areas really blown out, overexposed, or those shadows too dark, but it's not a problem at all thanks to this HDR. And then at night, you have this color night vision that takes advantage of that LED on the front. I thought this picture was really great at night. That color night vision is awesome. Definitely better than other cameras without that color night vision. They say you can get a clear picture at night up to six feet away using this LED strip on it. Now I found the speed of notifications to be really fast when I'm on Wi-Fi. When I turned Wi-Fi off on my phone, the notifications definitely were a little bit slower. Now remember there are essentially two types of notifications that you can enable. Those from the camera's motion sensor and those from the doorbell button itself. So you can't actually get notifications if somebody is there but doesn't ring the doorbell if you want. And this worked surprisingly well. I actually got notifications often that the camera detected a person when that person was just walking up and down the street here. Uh, you know, that's probably a good at least 35 plus feet away from the doorbell camera at least and it recognized that it was a person. So that was pretty impressive. It also recognized animals just fine. You know, somebody's little cat was run up on my porch one night and it notified that it was an animal. Now for the doorbell itself, you'll actually get notifications on your phone, your watch, your home pods and your Apple TV when somebody pushes that doorbell. First, let's talk about the home pods. I kept my original doorbell chime enabled, which you can actually turn off by the way, if you don't want your original doorbell chime to sound when somebody pushes that, you have that option in HomeKit. But I did keep mine enabled and you can actually hear the home pods throughout the house chime pretty much at the exact same time as my existing doorbell chime. So the response time on the home pods was very good. It looks like Shane Whatley is at the door. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you can choose which home pods will chime when that doorbell is pressed. Unfortunately, I don't see a way to adjust the volume of the doorbell chimes on those home pods, and there's no way to change what sound the chime plays. It would be cool if we could change it to other things, you know, especially for the holidays and stuff like that. Maybe one day we'll get that feature. Now notifications on the Apple TV for me were also very fast. And this is probably one of my favorite features of all. Uh, I like the HomePod integration, but the Apple TV man is just awesome. If you have an Apple TV on and somebody rings your doorbell, you'll get a pop-up of that camera in the corner of your TV. You can then tap one button on the remote to make it full screen if you want. You can also access any of your HomeKit cameras on the Apple TV by opening the control center tapping the home icon and finding your camera. And an even easier way is just to tell Siri on the Apple TV remote, show me the front porch and boom, your live stream pops up. Now, one thing I didn't really consider much is the Apple Watch integration. This I can see being really useful if you're away from home, especially, you know, get that quick glance on your watch when somebody rings your doorbell. Uh, when you get that notification, you'll get a snapshot. That sometimes did take a little while to load for me, but you can also turn up the volume, turn on the microphone, and have a two-way conversation right there on your watch. And even better, just below that, you have an option to unlock your doors. How cool is that? So I can just unlock my doors with one tap right here when somebody rings my doorbell, all from my watch. That's really cool. And similarly on the iPhone, you get the notification with the snapshot. When you tap on that, it should open up the recording within the home app. And here you can easily tap that button to see all the accessories nearby. If you do want to unlock the door or open the garage or whatever. And of course you can also tap that live button if you want to jump to the live feed and maybe have a two way conversation with somebody at your front door. Now back to that facial recognition and the notifications. I actually had a little trouble with this at first. 
So what was happening was that my HomePods would chime, but not announce who was at the door. And actually for a while, I wasn't getting doorbell notifications on my phone. They were coming to my wife's phone, they were coming to the Apple TV and other devices, but not my iPhone or my iPad. And since the facial recognition uses your phone's, you know, your account's uh, photo library, I kind of, after some troubleshooting, figured that it must have been an issue with my Apple ID somewhere along the line. So what I actually did was just, I signed out of my iCloud account on my phone, waited a few minutes, signed back in, and then everything started to work fine again. I started getting notifications on my phone again with that doorbell press and that facial recognition started to work better and we were getting those notifications um, when somebody was at the door. So I tell you that just in case you have any similar issues, maybe it'll help. That's what worked for me. Now that two-way audio worked great. I did find that the speaker volume on the actual doorbell was a little low. So it seemed to work best when the person at the doorbell kind of got a little bit closer to the doorbell. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Is it cold out there? Yes. Okay, can you hear me pretty good or is it loud or is it hard to hear? It's not super loud, but you can hear it. If you get up closer to it, you can hear it better. Kind of got to get close, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Testing, one, two, three, can you hear me right now? Yeah, like if you're behind the doormat, you can hear it pretty good. Yeah? All right. Good. Well, thank you for helping me with my test. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. There was really no lag when talking to someone, so overall this worked well. The audio was clear on both ends and seemed responsive enough to hold a conversation. I do just wish that speaker volume on the doorbell was a little bit louder. So we have discussed a lot here. Again, check those time codes below for more details on any specific aspect. But overall, what are my thoughts after using this for a little while? Well, I love it. I mean, all in all, man, this thing is awesome. Like I said, I didn't have a video doorbell before. Now I do, so I'm happy. It works with HomeKit. I've been waiting for a HomeKit secure video doorbell, and this is the answer. It's not perfect. The facial recognition was a little hit or miss sometimes. You do only get that vertical camera feed, which some people may not like. But for me, it works really well on my front porch. I was really happy with it there. I love the view and the angle. It just works well on my porch. Like I said, I do wish the speaker was a little bit louder on the doorbell so people could hear a little easier without having to get so close to the doorbell. I'm not crazy about how easy it is to remove either. I don't think it's a huge problem, but like I said, I suppose if somebody's familiar with this product and they wanted to, uh, they could pop this thing off and be gone in a matter of seconds. So. Now the image quality I think is great. That HDR really does a nice job at not over exposing or under exposing anything. That color night vision is really nice. Response time seems to be good. And it also maintained a solid connection to HomeKit in the time that I've been using it, which is important. I think it looks good, has a great design. Installation was super easy and they did provide great step-by-step -step instructions. And maybe most importantly for me, it works effortlessly with my HomeKit setup and that Apple ecosystem. These notifications on the Apple TV, the watch, and even the HomePods are just awesome. I know that my footage is encrypted, private, and secure thanks to HomeKit Secure Video. And since I'm already paying for that two terabyte plan, I don't have to pay anything extra for cloud storage. And like I said in the beginning, this camera isn't for everyone, but it's pretty much made for someone like me, someone who's all in on the Apple ecosystem and HomeKit as my smart home platform of choice. And if that's you, then you'll probably be pretty happy with this also. If that's not you, then you might wanna look at other options. Now there are doorbell cameras out there that have even more features like package detection and all kinds of things like that, just without that HomeKit integration. All right, so I hope this answered all of your questions. If so, hit that like button below. If there's anything I missed or you need clarification on anything, have any questions, feel free to drop those or any comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. I wanna thank Trend Micro for sponsoring today's video. 
And again, my name is Shane, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using HomeKit. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. We gotta keep it simple, man. So if that's something you're into, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon to get notified when we publish new HomeKit videos every Sunday right here. And also hit that join button down there below to find out how you can support this channel even further for about $5 a month and get access to some cool member-only perks like joining that private Discord group that we were talking about earlier. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see y'all later.